I want to ask you to join me for a talk at the family table. You might be saying, talk at the family table, what's this about? Two or three times a year, we like to sit down and have a talk at the family table, kind of give an update. We do this to improve communication. One of the things that we want to do is to keep you who would like to know all the details informed as well as we can. Those who want to not know any of the details, we try not to bore you. So that's what we're doing. But before I go into all of that stuff, what I want to say first, I love being your pastor. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and uh, it's really been great to be here. We love you guys. We love how you love on us. And we're really thankful for that and thankful for the opportunity to be here. And we mentioned that. We, Kim and I talk about that a bit. Just what a blessing it is to be here. So let me talk then for a few minutes about what's going on. What's been happening. So first, we're going to recap some things. Phase two, addition. We just put in a whole new front entrance. If you're new with us today, you would know that, that did such a great job of blending it in. It was estimated to come in at about $200,000. We actually brought the project in at $170,000. We do have still a few outstanding bills that are need to be paid, but for the most part, we're getting it in at about that price. In addition to that, we did a number of upgrades that weren't in the original bid. That is, we paved the north driveway. We also upgraded the electrical service dramatically to have new electrical service out here that is there for being able to do multiple phases of other buildings if we need to at some point. We also ran a water line out to be able to service the gardens to the other side of the garage out there. So those who work in the gardens, they're very grateful for that. They're about to clap there. And so those were some significant upgrades that we did and we still brought it in under the project. We didn't seal the parking lot. We're planning on doing that and getting new lines on. We know it's hard to see them, but because the project ran a little later than we anticipated, if we put it on now, it just gets scraped off by the plow. So we're going to wait until spring and get that one done. Other projects that we completed in 2016, just to remind you also, separate from phase two, we were replacing all the windows in the building that were aged out and leaking and that kind of thing. We ended up completing two years worth of that. Um, so this year's and next year's, a tune of $19,500. We got all that done this year. We paid for it all with cash. And as you note in the bulletin, we have a really good bank balance as well. So thank you for your generosity that is making that possible. Those are a lot of things to get done. What else is new? Well, we had an assimilation training this past week that went very well. We are going to be looking at a number of new strategies to welcome guests. We do that well. We feel like we can also work at doing it better and helping them to really feel not only welcomed, but to help them to be able to be followed up so that they will become regular attenders and members. So one change that we're going to be implementing is to wear name tags. That'll help a lot of us out, actually, because we see, and sometimes especially if we attend a different service than we normally do, we get to help work on knowing names. And that way, you won't walk up to me so much and say, now, what was your name? Just kidding, you don't do that. Right? So we're uh, going to look at implementing that. We'd appreciate your uh, help with it. Another thing is that you saw a new pastor up here, our family life pastor, Mike Stinson. Yay. And I uh, wanted to give a little explanation to maybe those of you who didn't hear why that title. The idea is we recognize the need to work and move and get stuff going more with our youth and with our children. But we also recognize that in today's day and age, perhaps in every day and age, that they're not going to really stay connected to the church unless we also bridge out into the family. And so that's the idea is that we want to connect with the families as well and be able to do that. Thus, the family life in the title that also helps to shift the job description toward that direction. What else? Well, we want to look forward then. So those are things that have been done that we're doing. But what's next? What are we looking at? Well, we want to continue to discover how we can bring the love of Christ into our community. Not just that we sit and wait for people to come to us. How do we go to the community and make an impact there? And one of the things that has been noted in our city, in the city of Plymouth, by city leaders, city administration, is that they've identified a need for additional indoor recreational space here in Plymouth. What does that look like? So the idea is they're saying we really need to be able to have different things. So we're exploring the possibility of what would it look like to put a Plymouth Community Center, we would call it, on our property. That's what we're proposing. That's what we're looking at and exploring. We're in the initial research stage. There are still many questions to be addressed, but in good communication, we want to get it out to you early, get you thinking and praying about it and talking about it. So that's why we're doing this. Principal point, though, is to be a community servant. How do we go about doing that? So when we look around and we see what's happening here, 
The need is for additional gym space for youth and adult activities, additional indoor walking hours for seniors and moms and, well, cold weather wimps. Yeah, there's a few volunteers. Okay, so it would, of course, also be available for church activities and special events. That's what we're looking at. So what would that look like? Well, the idea is that it would basically be a full-size gym. That's what you see on one side of the building and then can be done in two phases. The second part would be maybe a fitness center, kitchen, uh, locker rooms to make it a multi-use facility so that you could do lots of different things there. So that's the idea. Where would we put it? You can tell we got very high tech with this. <laughs> I got out my colored markers. And what I did is I marked the building that you're presently sitting in and the garage in yellow. So that's what, where we're at. And so then if you picture, we would attach sort of onto the present parking right out here and add that. That's the green part. That's all the parking. And then that facility, let's go back up to it. So if you picture that building again and then go, it's down the slope and over here so that it would have a lot of uh, visibility off of that wall to Highway 23 and to the future possibility of the frontage road that would come through the bottom part of our land. Highway, uh, that 20-year um, plan, I understand, was planned 20 years ago as a 20-year plan, and now it's a 20-year plan again. So it is apparently a t perpetual 20-year plan. I don't know how that works, but we are taking in consideration the idea that we might have the land cut off at the bottom of us, our property here toward 23, and so it's all fitted in within that but we really haven't taken a ton of time. Again, what is the point of doing this? Well, we want to talk about, and the questions about the concept and ideas are welcome, but it's too premature to talk about prices and that kind of thing. We're not at that stage. So talking about the concept is great. We'll plan to have more details at the annual meeting. We'll present it. We'll try and get some more details to you there and a little better plan and ideas and being able to look at what that is. One of the things that I really want you, we want you as a board to be addressing is if this is not the way to connect to the community, we're okay with that. This isn't something we just have to do or that we sense that God told us to do it. But if it's not the way, what is the way in which we will win opportunities to make a difference? In other words, how does God intend to use our land and our resources so that we're manifesting his glory out into the community? That's what we want to do. How do we leverage what he's already given us to go out and to serve in the community in such a way as that people be one to faith in Christ and incorporated into the life of the church? So that's the, the means by which we're exploring this. So please be in prayer about that and helping and asking God to be leading us. So then one last item. Can I ask you a favor? Good. So, I did this at my very first talk at the family table about three years ago, and that was this. Even if we do this, but you come in like this, 